In the diagnostic test of hearing, where we're using, first of all, the headphones, and then subsequently the bone conduction, what we have to remember is that there are occasions when one ear that we think we're testing is actually being contaminated by an ear that we're not testing. And what, what's happening is what we call cross-hearing. So, for example, with this what's called a TDH39 headphone with an MX41AR cushion, that's a bit technical, but basically it's an internationally accepted configuration where we know exactly what level the signals need to be for normally hearing people, and we use this to test everybody and compare the client with the norm. When I put this on my ears, like that, at a certain level of signal going into my right ear, it's possible for the signal to cross over my head by bone conduction and be heard in my other ear. So if I've got a difference between my two ears because of some form of pathology, maybe I've got an infection in my right ear and my left ear is normal, then it's possible that the left ear will start to hear the signal and I only know that when I hear a signal I have to press the button, so I will press the button, but actually it's not my right ear that the audiologist is testing that's hearing, it's actually my left. Now these audiologists are pretty cute and they know that these things can happen. And they have little techniques that they then adopt to make sure that the non-test ear is switched off allowing the test ear to show its true thresholds. So, with bone conduction, we have a slightly different problem, and I'll talk to you about that in a minute. But let's focus again on the headphones. So, once the signal gets to a certain level, there is a danger it could cross over my head and be heard in the other ear. And when the audiologist is doing tests, he knows when that might happen. And what he'll do, he'll occupy my other ear, the non-test ear, just adjust those, so that it can't hear the whistle that I'm listening for in my test ear. And the technique is called masking. And there is a very simple laid down procedure that audiologists follow to make sure that they switch off the non-test ear enabling the test ear to hear the signal. And that's something that you might have to carry out when you're having your hearing tested in a diagnostic procedure. Now people say, Ooh, is that difficult? You've got noise in one ear, and you've got to listen in the other. Well, interestingly, we can do this test with children from the age of seven years. So basically, once you get to seven, you can be trained to actually try and avoid listening and forget about the noise and just wait till you hear the whistle. Whenever you hear the whistle, put the man in the boat, ball in the stick, whatever it is that the play audiometry is actually demanding. And with you, the adult, what we're saying is try and ignore that rushing noise in this ear, listen for the signal in your right ear, and whenever you hear the whistle, press the button. And this noise will get a little bit louder, but you keep listening for the signal in your test ear. And very, very quickly, the audiologist will figure out what the true threshold of that ear is. No contamination from the other ear. And that will help them in making sure that you get great fitting hearing aids in the event that amplification is necessary.